Without her, I wouldn't be here. The very name that she has the body the presence she brings in the room. God bless you and thank you. So obviously you guys saw, I didn't know you guys were going to play that. <laughs> That's a very aggressive joke. A lot of lawyers were involved before, <laughs> before that came to air. So when I got asked to be here tonight and that got played, I hope you guys saw something. And it's the point of what I want to talk to you about tonight. It's the power of perseverance. When they asked me what's the number one thing that was going through my heart, I said, I am Glenda Scott's son. See, we come from nothing. That's right. We haven't came from anything. That's right. I asked my father, what is our lineage? He said, your grandfather's father was a slave. We don't know anything past that. Right. And so when I say, I am Glenda Scott's son, I am not looking at just my mother. I'm looking at the perseverance of generations that have to do anything possible so that I could be on that stage today. I looked at what they had to do from the education. Many of you came on planes from different countries, leaving beautiful weather to come here at negative 30 degrees Celsius. And you put on them gloves. Some of you worked at 24 and 4. And you did it, not for yourself, but for the perseverance of tomorrow. Amen. They say the person, that, well, the person that plants the seed, knowing they will never feel its shade, is someone who understands the world. Thank you, NBCC, for this honor. Thank you, Joy, for um, the, the nomination and the constant encouragement every time, every year. Um, and so I, in order to not to ramble, I have my notes, so I'm just going to share it. Um, Back in 2016, I was here receiving the Phil Fraser Award for Outstanding per Performance in Literary Arts for my poetry. What many didn't know is that I was in the middle of my first sick leave from work, recovering from my second diagnosis that lupus gave me, um, polymyositis. A rare disease that causes your immune system to attack your muscles like they're a problem. Even if it, it was a day to celebrate, I felt unworthy of the prize since my body kept me from my heart. I was embarrassed that I lost a lot of weight and prednisone made me dizzy and my face round and I didn't want to know, I, I didn't want people to know that I just spent the last five months fighting for my life and regaining mobility and that's why they haven't seen me for a while. Lupus is a disease that known to have a thousand faces and predominantly affects black women, women of color. And in rare cases, it affects men and they are at risk of, and, and for men experiencing lupus, um, they are at higher risk of experiencing seizures as a symptom. And I have shape shifted my way through this disease for over 10 years. And during the pandemic, there, there was a shortage of the medication that I depended on to, to remain able-bodied. Like, I'm moving without pain because of the medications that I'm on. And during the pandemic, there was a shortage. And the infusion that I used to get at an outpatient clinic at the U of A hospital had to be done at home and under the skin. And so I had to learn in less than a week how to become my own nurse. And the center that oversaw my care and taught me how to do so was the Dr. John Akabutu Center for Rare Diseases and Bleeding Disorders. And this is why this award means so much to me. Um, yeah. Whew. For the first year and a half of the pandemic, I administered my own infusions at home while working a full-time healthcare job. And when lupus started attacking my kidneys, as it often does to lupus patients, I had to undergo six rounds of low-dose chemotherapy as an only mode of treatment. And fun fact about chemo is um, you get ulcers in your mouth. And oftentimes it's like basically holes in your tongue. And that's what I was experiencing. 
And in order for me to actually have a, a, a decent quality of life, I was prescribed a mouthwash. And guess who invented this mouthwash? <laughs> Dr. John Akabuti. And uh, so this trophy is just, I mean, my survival is the award, in my opinion. But this trophy is the public display of many private victories. And many people celebrate me and call me resilient, but I am only as resilient as the support I receive. My resilience is dependent on the community that surrounded me at my lowest. So I'd like to thank, first of all, Jesus for giving me peace when my body didn't make sense. I'd like to thank Auntie Jean at the back. <laughs> the friends that showed up my nurses and specialists. Un grand merci à mes parents qui ne sont pas là présentement. My siblings who are not here in the room but covered me with their prayers and their reminders of who I am when my circumstances were proving me otherwise. And my last thought is, if you know someone who is struggling with lupus or another kind of chronic illness, please know that their resilience is dependent on your willingness to extend your strength to them. And as Bell Hooks said, rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion. Thank you.